Next question then would start with John. Um, we just talked about how the federal government spends a tremendous amount of money on defense. The federal government spends comparably little on schools. As, as John said early on, most of that falls on our state and local government. The feds spend less, provide less than 10% of the funding for K through 12 schools nationwide. And yet, members of Congress do have influence over how we foster educational excellence and equity in this country. So my question to you is, what would you do as a member of Congress to support our public schools? Yeah, get rid of the, get rid of the current uh, Secretary of Education for beginners. I know that's not my job in Congress, but I think uh, if you look at uh, you know, what she has done in some of the programs there, you will see that the Republican Party and specifically this administration has an attitude around education of starving the beast. You know, they feel that underfunding education will uh, create a cycle of showing that it isn't working and it isn't um, educating our children and therefore we need private schools or we need charter schools or, or we need vouchers. Um, and that's, that, that, is a failed, um, that, that is a failed concept. Uh, my father was a teacher. I grew up in an educator's household. I think I, you heard me talk about that story. And we grew, I grew up in the West Coast in California. And back in California in the 70s and 60s, um, we were the envy of the country when it came to education. And it was because it was funded properly and it was only after Prop 13 that it kicked the education funding out from underneath. Now, granted, that was, that was at the state level, but we have to fund education. We have to raise teacher pay. We're not valuing our educators in our society enough. If you look at other countries like Finland and South Korea and even Poland, they're paying their teachers as if they're, the, um, they're some of the highest paid individuals in their society. Unfortunately, teaching and nursing and some other uh, healthcare professions, they got started out as women's, uh, literally called women's work, and therefore they were grossly underfunded from the beginning, and they've never caught up. And we at the federal level have to correct that. We have to put money there in education and in teacher pay, because if we don't educate our children, and I learned this as a school board chair in Rappahannock County, if a child doesn't learn to read, but before they get into preschool, or by the time they're in third grade, they are behind for the rest of their lives. We need to invest, invest early and at a heavy level. Thanks very much, John. Claire, you would be second. So as the mother of three children uh, running a congressional campaign and trying to homeschool home my children, I have never been so grateful for our teachers. And um, I, you know, I, I was passionate about this issue before, but boy, is, is uh, the fire really lit now. Um, so, so we have got to talk about raising teacher pay. We have to make it possible for teachers to live in the neighborhoods they're teaching and working in. It, it, is, it, it is unacceptable, the, as John mentions, the, the way that our teachers are paid. Um, and when we talk about inequity, inequities, um, you know, all you have to do is look at Betsy DeVos and, and the policies she's put out in the course of the last two weeks to say, uh, yeah, this is, this is part of the systemic inequities I talked about early on, right? We're, we're talking about sharing public funding with private uh, religious-based schools. We're talking about uh, removing protections from our most vulnerable students. And, and then, you know, talking about um, essentially uh, making it more difficult in our in our you know university system for for victims of, of assault to to report um, th that gets to the core message for me here which is we have got to pass meaningful gun reform I can't stress enough how much it drove me to this race that not only is my daughter worrying about the weapons her dad carries on the battlefield but when my husband is carrying a weapon on the battlefield for this country thousands of miles away from his daughter he is worried about the safety of his child in her classroom our teachers and students need to be able to focus on learning the classroom has to be safe we need to start there thank you claire karen I have to unmute my, uh, my mom was a teacher in Central Virginia in Orange County and Spotsylvania County for over 30 years. 
my father-in-law's on the school board down in Appomattox County. And, uh, you know, I've spent quite a, t quite a long time in school myself. I'm currently on the board of directors for the Boys and Girls Club here in Central Virginia. Education is something that's near and dear to my heart. But even beyond those exposures, I actually worked on this in the White House for President Obama. I worked on the My Brother's Keeper Initiative, which was his uh, program to improve life outcomes for boys and young men of color. It looked at six aims, the spaces where, where uh, young men of color really fall off the path to success or to opportunities for success. And four of them had to do with education. It was entering school ready to learn, reading at grade level by third grade, uh, successfully completing high school ready for post-secondary education, and then successfully completing that post-secondary education. That gave me a lot of time to work with the Department of Education and Secretary John King at the time in the Obama administration. It gave me a lot of time to work with the leaders who were helping to design what equitable schools could and should look like. As a member of Congress, yes, we absolutely care about teacher pay. That's a huge issue. And Delegate Hudson, as you know, a lot of this falls in your province in the general assembly. But as a member of Congress, we need to be looking at the Elementary and Secondary Education Act. We need to be looking at the vestiges of what was once No Child Left Behind and then became Every Student Succeeds and why it's still not not adequate for our schools. Here in Charlottesville and Albemarle, we're actually dealing with this in a completely different way. We had a lot of national exposure on the educational inequities, the students reading at grade level by third grade and, and at different grades, and how for black students, it was in the 40% and for white students in the 80s and 90s percent. That was both in Albemarle and in Charlottesville. I think the way for us to address that is by really updating the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, making sure that uh, equity is central to that and making sure that our schools are adequately resourced. Thanks very much. And R.D., you close us out. I was mostly a B student in high school until I walked into Susan Smith's advanced chemistry class and she said to me, why are you not making A's? Uh, when you come from a household where your parents don't go to college, you're not sure you should make A's. You're not sure what you should be doing about a lot of stuff when it comes to education. And so, uh, you know, this is a person who made a tremendous difference in my life. Uh, she's a very bright human being, um, could have done anything in the world, but it turns out she was my chemistry teacher. I want every American to have a Susan Smith in their life. I wanna make sure that everybody in all of our rural zip codes and here in Charlottesville as well, has a teacher that inspires them. And the best way to do that is to pay them like the professionals that they are, that's it. You gotta treat people like they know what they're doing, provide them with the training and the resources to do it and get the job done. And it's just a sad state of affairs that our teachers are spending so much time doing paperwork and have much less time to spend with students to inspire them to do whatever they want to do. And we can, we can help with this from the federal level. We can help recruit teachers to rural areas and urban areas alike through AmeriCorps or other programs that exist and make sure that folks can uh, have great, great teachers in their life. And it's a range of teachers, but I guess my specific example would be for STEM teachers. Uh, that's something that's really important to me is that, you know, Cameron says, has this great phrase, you can't be what you, you can't see. And that's so important that our children, uh, well, no matter what their zip code here in the fifth, see a person that they can, can inspire them and make them make those choices, as Cameron was indicating, that are so predictive later in life. And um, that's my wish for every American that they can have that. The last thing I will say is as long as rich people, kids go to better schools and poor people, we cannot close the inequality gap in this country. You can't do it. It's impossible. Um, education has a big predictor on lifelong learning. Uh, we know that someone with a bachelor's degree has a much more, uh, much more earning potential. And what we've got to do is make sure to fix that specific problem. And again, as Cameron mentioned, that's not saying it's Sally's problem, but it's something she has to work on with us too, and something at the federal level we can help with.